And the Lord said that the heathen will suffer for their sins and that the righteous shall gain the kingdom of heaven. In John 14, 6, Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Amen. God is with us during the day. God is with us during the night. God is with us during the bountiful times and the lean, through the sorrowful times and the joyful. He watches over us. Amen. And in these troubled times, when it seems as if the entire world is filled with those who do not believe in him, he is with us. Amen. He surrounds us. Amen. And he is within us. Amen. Thanks. You going into town? You know where the university is? Yeah. Is it near the town? Yeah. Hop in. Oh, oh, this is is oh thank you. God bless you. You've seen sunshine. She took off already. Sorry, Abigail. Well, that town has a will of a stone mountain. <laughs> Just like someone else I knew at her age. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Bye. You too. Welcome to heaven. That's one way to describe it? Oh, you're gonna love it here. Fresh air, nice people, lots of hiking, hunting, fishing, skiing in the winter. Sounds great. I don't do any of those things. Oh, you will. It's mandatory. Classes don't start for two weeks. A lot of students. Um, class starts tomorrow. What? Just you told me. I know what I told you, but we need you now. Professor Broadwater died so suddenly and I couldn't take the chance you'd say no. So you lied to me. Thomas Aquinas Moore, I have never lied to you. What about that time in grad school? Okay, okay. I lied to you once. That was only because I wanted to sleep with you. That, that, wait, you wanted to sleep with me? Oh, honey, that ship sailed a long time ago. No, that changes everything. Oh. But Jess, I don't have time to prepare. Stop whining. You talk comparative religion a hundred times. Uh, well, I don't think they'll like what I have to say here. Don't dumb it down, Thomas. 
This may be a small state college in the backwoods of Appalachia, but it is still an institution of higher learning. Many of these kids are the first in their families to go to college. They deserve the best. Just teach them the way you would those rich kids at the University of Spoiled Children. Don't you mean USC? Oh, yeah, I forgot. Actually, I'm glad you called, Jess. I needed to get out of L.A. How long? Five years, next month. You should find someone. I've tried. Your office. Back in L.A., it always amazed me how lonely you can get in a city of 10 million people. It'll be like old times. You'll see. Classes at 8. Yeah. Hi. You work here? You must be the new professor taking over for Dr. Broadwater. Yes, I'm Professor Moore. Abigail. You need something? Oh, yes. Uh, it's blue in my office. Do you know where I can get another one? I'll get it. There's no need. That's what I do. You're in the basement, right? Yes. So what do you teach, Professor? Oh. Nothing too exciting. Biblical studies, with an emphasis on post-apostolic forensic textual analysis. It's kind of like uh, CSI, only instead of crime scenes, I gather evidence of biblical origins. Oh, so you teach the Bible? Yes. I said it a good word, too. Well, it's a little different. What faith are you? Faith? What church do you belong to? You know, there's Baptist, Presbyterian, Lutheran, <laughs> Seventh-day Adventist, Methodist. <laughs> I can tell you the best one to go to. Now, I'm Pentecostal on account of my mama was, so I had to become one, too. Well, I really don't go to church. You're not Jewish, are you? Uh, it's okay with me. If you are, it's just we don't have a Jewish church around here. Synagogue. Hmm? Jews practice their religion in a synagogue, not a church. All right. Are you Catholic? We have a lot of Catholics around here. I really don't have a religion. How do you teach the Bible without a religion? Well. My research deals with the history and development of the various Christian Bibles prior to the First Council of Nicaea in 325 A.D. Oh, I see. Well, good luck today. But if you are Jewish, there's a real nice Jewish church, synagogue, about 10 miles away from here in Leesville. I can show you on a map if you want. Come on, Michelle. he's like 10 minutes late. Let's leave. There's no time limit, Kenny. Actually, if a professor is this late, we can leave. I saw the Lord today in a vision. And I said to him, Lord, today I saw you in a vision. And he answered, blessed are you that did not waver at the sight of me. For where the mind is, there is the treasure. Now, who can tell me where that comes from? Anyone? Uh, the Bible? Which Bible? Well, there's only one Bible, sir, the Holy Scripture. All right, Ms. Michelle Ross. All right, then, Ms. Ross. Can you tell me which chapter of the Holy Scriptures I quoted? One of the Gospels. 
Which one? Matthew. No. John. No again. Luke. Thrice I say thee no. The verse I quoted was from the Gospel of Mary. But there's no Gospel of Mary in the Bible. Are you sure? I know the books of the Bible, Professor. I can recite them for you from first to last or last to first. It's true. She always won the Bible books contest in Sunday school. What? You did? No recitation is necessary, Miss Ross. But what you think you know so intimately as the Bible is actually one of several Bibles. If someone could dim the lights, please. In 1604, King James I of England commissioned a great Bible in the hopes of finding a remedy for the many inconsistencies with the various Bibles of his day. The King James Version was then adopted by many of the Protestant sects in England at the time, including the Puritans who brought it to North America. Now the Bible that Miss Ross can quote forward and backward is actually two very distinct Bibles. First, the Hebrew Bible is sometimes referred to rather pejoratively as the Old Testament, somehow inferring that by being old it is less relevant or valid. Now the King James Version also includes a second Bible called the New Testament. But there are other Bibles. The Roman Catholic Bible, for instance, has some books in it that aren't in the King James Version. The Greek and Russian Orthodox Bibles have some books not found in the King James or Roman Catholic Bibles. Then there are the apocryphal books. These are religious texts that now exist outside the biblical canon, which brings us to the Gospel of Mary, written on papyrus, carbon dated to the time of Jesus of Nazareth. Now we're not sure which Mary it refers to, but it probably refers to the apostle Mary Magdalene. Come on. Professor, everybody knows that all the apostles were men. Excuse me? I believe there were women apostles. Yeah, somebody had to wash all those dirty robes. <laughs> yeah. As intriguing as the question of whether female apostles ever existed is, the monumental, mind-blowing question you need to ask yourself is, with all these different Bibles and books and epistles written and rewritten over thousands of years, how can we be sure which one to believe? Which one is truly the irrefutable, infallible word of God? Perhaps all. Perhaps none. But if these books are the bedrock upon which your belief in God is built, and they are unreliable, what then happens to the foundations of your faith? But this class isn't about faith. It's about facts. And we will study the various religious texts and through reason discover the truth behind these words. Can you believe that? What? The professor. He's spreading lies about the word of God. Michelle, if you don't like the class, just drop it. Hannah. Ow. We cannot let him say those evil things. It is our duty to protect the others. That's what Jesus did. Come on. Let's head to the calf. I'm starving. Shut up, Kenny. Hello. Hey. Where's your little helper? I noticed you and your daughter out here yesterday. Dance lesson. So is this some kind of club? Women of this town have planted flowers for over 100 years. When they get a planter, they hang on to it. You must have to die to get one these days. I heard the lady who had this one died last week. I didn't mean it that way. The woman who had this planter was a good woman. She got the cancer last year, and she went quick. God rest her soul. This now she's in a place where there's no more pain. Mommy! 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 Goodness, Amber taught us today. Hey, that's really good. Bravo, sunshine. Hello, Thomas. You two know each other. I gave her a ride into town. 
Little lady, what have I told you about riding the cars with strangers? He's not a stranger, Mama. He's a professor. I'm gonna dance in the Bolshoi Ballet one day. You can tell she talks about since her teacher told her about her trip to Moscow. Mm -hmm. That's my little sunshine. Always the dreamer. She's the light of my life. Mama. I can't help it, baby. You are. I actually saw the Bolshoi Ballet dance when I was lecturing in Moscow. Really? Wow. Tell me, tell me. Not now, baby. We gotta go. But I want to hear more about Moscow. Later. I gotta work tonight. Maybe the professor will tell you another time. It would be my pleasure. Hey, you could come to the picnic this Sunday. Oh, honey, I don't think Dr. Moore would... I like picnics. It's at our church. You can come to the service with us, too. Uh, baby, he doesn't uh, go to church. Why not? Well, because I don't believe in God. Oh, do you believe in picnics? <laughs> yes. Then we'll see you Sunday. It's a date. Go get in the truck, baby. I'll be right there. Bye, Thomas. She's quick. Sorry about that. When she gets something in her head. It's fine. I actually do like picnics. Okay, then. See you Sunday. Dr. Moore? Yes. I'm Harold Pack, Dean of the College of Liberal Arts. Oh. Hello. <laughs> ah, sorry the place is such a mess. I'd like to meet my new faculty as soon as I can, just to see how they're settling in. Well, I would have liked a little more time to prepare. John Broadwater's passing was a burden on all of us. God rest his soul. Thank you for stepping in on such short notice. Glad to be of help. Your research into biblical origins is quite fascinating. And Professor Griffin tells me your class is quite uh, enlightening. Well, I like to stir things up, knock the students out of their complacency. <laughs> Indeed. Indeed. Comparative religious studies is of great importance to me. I would love to sit in on your class, if that would not be a problem. Of course, Doctor. Anytime. Well, I'll leave you to your work. If you need anything, my door is always open. You really believe that? Don't get him started. With every fiber of my being. But it's a sacred institution. The glue which holds together our social order. Guys, I'm warning you, let it rest. It's a scourge on the soul of humanity and should be wiped off the face of the earth. Oh, Jesus, here we go. Millions of dollars are spent on this Sunday event, which has no practical value. Money, I might add, which could go to education, health care, the environment. We hoist their leaders on pedestals while they continually disappoint their followers by being mired in scandal after scandal after scandal. I can't believe what I'm hearing. Jesus, Thomas, it's only football. Professional football, Ooh, basketball, baseball, and all the others. They must be stopped. And who the hell came up with Monday night football? It's hard enough to get my students to study during the week. <laughs> this is heresy coming from a USC Trojan. <laughs> That's different. Oh? College sports builds character, oh. uh, stamina, self-esteem. Besides, without the Trojans, who would keep those whiny, arrogant Bruins in place? One more UCLA crack out of you, and you'll be wearing a hot wing nose ring. <laughs> What's a Bruin, anyway? I don't know. Not me. Hey, professors. Hey, where's Michelle? Thought you two were joined at the hip. She's at some church thing with her god squad. Professor Griffin, I was wondering if maybe you'd have time to help me out with that paper you signed yesterday. Sure, can he come by my office around 10 tomorrow? 10. Got it. Bye. Damn, I second that. You old leches, neither of you have a rod big enough for that fish. Even if he could catch her, he'd have to release her back into the wild. 
Doc's night out, I see. Who gets the hummus? Right here. Thanks. I didn't even know we had hummus on the menu. It's his favorite. It's all he would eat in Istanbul. Moscow, Istanbul. You get around. The only place I've ever been is Pittsburgh on a high school field trip. I've never been to Pittsburgh. <laughs> Before I forget, uh, directions to the church. Should I make anything? Can you make anything? That sounds like a challenge. Just asking. OK. See you Sunday. What? You're going to church with her? Just to the picnic afterward. You're going to the picnic with her? I think we know who has the biggest rod at this table, huh? side of the tracks. Or drunk. You're horny. Well, you're the one who said I should date. Not that one, Pookie. Jesus gang this kid. Trust me. Is that any way for a good Catholic to talk? What the hell does an idiot know about good Catholics? <laughs> One of our brothers said, Reverend, I fear that the Lord has turned his back on me because of my sins, a total misunderstanding of God. The Lord would never reject us. When we sin, we turn our backs on God. So no more misunderstanding. You want God's forgiveness? All you got to do is turn around. Say amen. Amen. Raise your hand if you like Harry Potter. And why do you like him? Because he can use magic. Yes. Harry Potter is a warlock, and he can use magic, and that's pretty cool, right? Yes. yes. Wrong. Warlocks are the enemies of God. Witches and warlocks are not heroes. They get their power from the devil. And if Harry Potter were alive during biblical times, he would have been put to death. Now, don't you want to be one of God's heroes? Yes! Don't you want to spread the good word given to us by our Lord Jesus? Yes! Then the next time that you see someone reading Harry Potter or watching those movies, you tell them that warlocks are evil and that the only true hero is the one who died for our sins. And who is that? Jesus! And do you love Jesus? Yes! Then stand up and say it with me. I, I love, love Jesus! I love Jesus! I love Jesus! I love Jesus! I love Jesus! Prima Ballerina, the most beautiful dancer in all of Europe, would run across the stage and leap 10 feet up in the air. Shut up. <laughs> I swear. I could do that. <laughs> of course you could. But to be a Prima Ballerina takes years and years of practice. 
can't give up. Once I say I'll do something, I do it. Don't I, Mama? That's true. She promised the Reverend she'd sell 100 boxes of cookies for the Christmas Toys fundraiser. She must walk 30 miles all over these mountains, and she sold every box. That's my little sunshine. She never gives up. Excuse me, Miss Abigail. She wanted to give this to you. It's a chess pie. It's my grandmother's recipe. God rest her soul. When are you due, honey? In two weeks. Everything's gonna be fine. Thank you. God bless you. That must be like the fourth couple that's giving you food. Happens all the time. Mama's famous. Sunshine, go play with your friends. But Mama, I want to hear more about the ballerinas. Later. Okay. She's great. So why are you famous? Speaking of food, what did you bring? <laughs> hummus. Madam, this isn't just any hummus. This recipe is from Jess's 101-year-old grandmother from the mystic Isle of Crete. That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> she claims that her long life is due to three things. This hummus, American cigarettes, and vigorous sex three times a week. Jess says she knows about the hummus and the cigarettes, but can't be sure about the sex. <laughs> is your wife moving out here? Oh. I'm not married. Not anymore. Why? I'm sorry, I shouldn't have pried. It's none of my business. No. It's just been a long time since I've talked about it. My wife died five years ago. Sorry. Why do you still wear the ring? No. Happened, I guess. Not even sure if it comes off. It's okay, Professor. I'm sure she wouldn't mind. What about you? Married three times. Three? Yep. The first one, we were both too young and too much in lust. <laughs> he left me for an older woman who could take care of him. The second one ran off with my best friend from high school. Ouch. Ah, it's a blessing, let me tell you. He's still knocking her up after eight kids. Dodged a bullet there. <laughs> and uh, my third husband, we're still married, but we've been apart for over a year. What happened? He hit me once. That was once too many. Reverend, come sit with us. Hello, Sister Abigail. Thank you. This is Dr. Moore. Call me Thomas. Ah. Thomas Aquinas more? I read your books, Brother Thomas. Thank you, Reverend. But I'm not one of your congregation. I know. You didn't stay long at the sermon today. Not really my thing. Oh? And yet you're named after two men of great faith, both of them saints. Oh, I have faith, Reverend, in humanity. Well, humanity's proven that without the guidance of our Lord Jesus Christ, it can do nothing but cause suffering. The church has had its hand in much of the suffering over the last 2,000 years. Spanish Inquisition, the Crusades, subjugation of Central and South America. I could go on. Without the church's guidance, uh, people would be lost, free to sin at will without any hope of, of salvation. Salvation? Reverend, people turn to religion because they fear the unknown. Oh, they might not admit it, not even to themselves. But, late at night, lying in the dark, counting their heartbeats, wondering how many do I have left, oh, they'll turn to just about anything to get rid of that fear. And religion is there, waiting patiently, with a very clever fairy tale. 
God gave us the free will to choose how we live our lives. And I choose to exercise my God-given free will and not believe in God. Well, I will pray for your soul, Brother Thomas. Please don't, Reverend. My soul's fine just the way it is. Thomas. It's okay, sister. Jesus will find a way into our brother's heart. He always does. I'm sorry. This was a mistake. Thomas, come and play with us. Sunshine, Professor Moore doesn't want to. Sure, Sunshine, let's go. Come on, boys. For 30 years, a professor at Oxford named John Mills has analyzed over a hundred of the world's oldest biblical texts, and he found over 30,000 variations. 30,000 mistakes in the Bible? You have to remember that 200 years after Jesus' death, the church leaders didn't have access to a computer or even a printing press. So if they wanted to send a Bible from the church in Rome to, say, a new church in Asia Minor, they had to copy it by hand, and mistakes were made. They didn't have monks in monasteries making copies back then. That wouldn't come along for another 200 years. So you'd either have to copy it yourself or spend a small fortune and hire a scribe to do it for you. If you could find one that would do it. Christianity was outlawed in the Roman world. A scribe could be crucified for copying the Bible. Exactly. And even if you could find a scribe that was willing to take the risks, Mistakes were still made. A slip of the pen, accidental omission, unconscious addition, a misspelled word. Let's face it, some of these guys were just incompetent. <laughs> <laughs> but wouldn't the monks correct the mistakes later? Some did. But if they didn't know a mistake existed to begin with, they simply just passed that on to the next Bible, and then the next, and then the next. This is so confusing. How do you know which Bible is the right one? It doesn't matter if there are 30,000 variations or 30 million. The Bible authors were divinely inspired, so their words must be true. OK, Miss Ross, I'll bite. Explain. Well, the Bible is the word of God. God is omniscient, so if he's all-knowing, then he can't make mistakes. Mistakes are man-made, not God-made. The Bible is self-correcting. If someone makes a mistake, then a later writer corrects it through God's will. What, like divine spell check? <laughs> it seems like a very human and not terribly godly way of going about things, Miss Ross. If God uses man to write his divine word, then it follows that God's omniscience passes through to the man during the writing. Or else what's the point? So if the Bible isn't inspired by God, then what is it? What do you think, Professor? I think that the Bible the many Bibles, are man's attempt to understand the world around him and his relationship to the people in it. But do I think these writings are the works of a all-knowing sky father working through specially chosen men? No. You're wrong. The Bible is the word of God. It has to be. All right then, Miss Ross, let's see what your divinely inspired Bible has in store for us today. Take three and pass them on. I'm going to take a little Old Testament survey here. How many of you have ever used the Lord's name in vain? Come on, nobody's hit their thumb with a hammer and tempted the wrath of God? Thank you, an honest man. Mr. Heiger, please stand. Leviticus 24:16. And he that blasphemeth the name of the Lord, he shall surely be put to death, and the congregation shall stone him. Congregation? <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, settle down. With the crazy cost of tuition these days, some of you have jobs. Mr. Karcher, did you work last Sunday? Yeah, every weekend, if I'd done enough practice. Practice counts too, I'm afraid. Please stand. Numbers 15. They found a man gathering sticks upon the Sabbath day, which in Mr. Karcher's case means working on a Sunday. Then the Lord said to Moses, 
the man must surely be put to death. All the congregation shall stone him with stones. Congregation? Oh, man! This is ridiculous. Everybody knows that the Old Testament doesn't apply to Christians anymore. Jesus died for our sins, so we wouldn't have to follow those stupid old laws. Really, Miss Ross? And which Bible do you read? The New Testament says that Jesus validates the old laws, and he commands all of his followers to obey them. Matthew 5, 16. Jesus says, Do not think I come to destroy the law or the prophets. I do not come to destroy, but to fulfill. Luke 16. It is easier for the heaven and earth to pass than the smallest part of the letter of the law to become invalid. Matthew again quoting Jesus. For truly I say to you, till heaven and earth pass away, not an iota, not a dot, will pass the law until all is accomplished. Whoever then relaxes one of the least of these commandments and teaches men so shall be the least in the kingdom of heaven. Are you trying to tell us that you obey all of the laws God commands in his Bible? Really? You haven't hurled at least one goddamn you at your parents when they pissed you off? She said a lot more than a Shut Jew. up, Kenny. <laughs> Leviticus 20. He that curseth his father or mother shall surely be put to death. Congregation? <laughs> Abigail. What do you have to say for yourself, Professor? About the other day. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have argued with the Reverend. No, you shouldn't have. But you both have strong convictions, I'll give you that. Can I buy you a beer to apologize? Yeah, my shift's not for another hour. About what I said, I didn't mean anything against you. I know. At least I think I do. Thank you, Emily. Thanks. And I know that your faith is important to you. My church has been there for me ever since I can remember. And uh, the feeling I get when I'm there, it's like I'm protected, you know, from anything bad in the world. And when life's at its hardest, I can always count on the people to help. The couple at the picnic. They were there for a reason. Not really. <laughs> Abigail, they treated you like you were a saint or something. It's not like that. Then what? We believe we can feel God's presence, almost like he's inside us. And we can sense him in others, too. Many religions claim to have a closeness with the divine power. Some of us get closer than others. Damn. What? It's my husband. I have a restraining order. He knows he's not supposed to be here. You want me to talk to him? No. Daryl was a champion wrestler in high school. He'd break you in half. No offense, Doc. I just don't want you getting hurt because of me. What are you doing here, Daryl? Hey, babe. Good to see you, too. Guys, this is my beautiful wife, Abigail. Say hello. Oh, don't be that way. Come the TRO on. says you have to stay 300 feet away from me in sunshine. That's the length of a football field, not a pool table. Well, in case you didn't know it, sweetheart, the T in TRO stands for temporary. And as of today, that's right. You gotta start all over. Then when can I see my baby girl? You stay away from her. You listen to me. I don't give a damn how many men you whore around with, but sunshine is still my daughter, and I have a right to see her. You'll have to kill me first. Well, I can do that, you crazy bitch. Hey, why don't we just give the lady a little room to breathe here? Lady? <laughs> Who are you? Thomas, don't. Thomas, don't. Listen, Daryl, he's just a professor from the college. Leave him alone. Oh, oh. Another one thinks he's better than us just because he has a piece of paper hanging on his wall. Actually, I have three pieces of paper hanging on my wall. Why do you even care what happens to this whole? You fucking her too. 
All I'm asking is that we take a minute and step back. What if I don't? You want to do something about it? Professor? We can still just walk away from this. Oh, look, look. Professor here likes to dance. <laughs> oh! Mother... One of the perks of being a college professor is you get to take classes for free. Oh. Oops. I'm kidding. You. I took six semesters with Coach of Get him out of here. Wow. Thanks. Yeah. Well, I should be going home. Still professor stuff to do. All right. Good night. wanted to tell you what you did for me tonight. Stand up for me against my husband. Fight for me. No one's ever done anything like that for me before. And it made me feel. It makes me feel. You should be treated better. You like me, right? Um. I mean, most men want me. But you like me, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't think that this. Sorry. It's okay. It, um. I haven't, um. You're not. It's just... Sometimes I feel lonely. And... I want a man by me. Even if it's just for one night. Is that what this is? About me liking you? Yeah. I'd like to try for a real date. I like that. But I want to cook for you. He can't do anything. He's a professor. But you heard what he said. He is mocking the word of our Lord. Hello, ladies. Hey, professor. 
Setting for midterms, I hope? Yes, yes sir. sir. He's kind of cute. Shouldn't we try to save him? That's what the pastor tells us. You're right. He is kind of cute. No. Some people are so blinded by Satan's lies that nothing can change them. We should pray for guidance before we do anything. Yeah. Yes. Dear Lord, we ask for your guidance in helping Professor Moore to find the wisdom and grace only you can give. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 We've got class. Oh, yeah. Bye, Michelle. Don't forget, we're volunteering at the food bank this weekend. Hannah. Do you love Jesus? Yes, of course I do. Ow. Would you do anything that he asks of you? Michelle, you're hurting me. Hannah. Yes. Yes, I would. We have to stop him. We should ask the pastor before we... There is no time for that. I can't. Do you want the whole church to find out that you broke your virginity pledge with that emo guy from class? But I didn't. We didn't. I just kissed him once. So you say? You wouldn't. Welcome to Evergreen. What do you think? Beautiful. And so are you. Where's Sunshine? Sleepover at a friend's tonight. I'm starving. Let's eat. No, I am done the house. I've been in my family for over 150 years. Really? Yep. The story goes, in 1854, Seamus Meek sailed over from Scotland and landed in New York. Now, Seamus didn't like the city too much, so he headed out west. Well, this was out west back then. He uh, bought the land and built a one-room house for his wife and four kids, and in the winter, the goats and the cows. Sounds rough. The girl was pretty tough up here in the mountains, in case you hadn't noticed. The Meeks kept adding on to the place until Evergreen appeared. You can still see the walls of Seamus' first house downstairs. So, Seamus was your great, great, great... Great, 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 great grandfather. <laughs> Eight generations of Meeks grew up here. So that's why you have so many jobs. And I want Sunshine's family to be the ninth generation. But now every time the um, house creaks, I shiver. Ghosts? Repair bills. <laughs> Between them. Um, Fixing the roof, land taxes, heating in the winter, a septic tank. You don't want to hear about all of this. Yes, I do. Where's your family from? Don't know. Who doesn't know where their family's from? An orphan. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> don't be. So you were raised in an orphanage? Well... They're called children's homes now, but yes, St. Mary Del Mar. I was literally dumped off on the front doorstep where the nuns found me. And you have no idea who your mother and father were? It's terrible. No, I had plenty to eat, clothes that fit, lots of children to play with. Jesuits next door gave me a world-class education. Okay, let me get this straight. You were raised by nuns, educated by priests, mm -hmm. And you have no religion. Ironic, isn't it? I'd say miraculous. <clears throat> oh, no, you don't. I don't know how they did it in the orphanage, but here, guests don't do dishes. My mother would roll over in her grave. More wine? That you can do.
We found the museum. Museum? In the summer, we get lots of tours up here. History bus mostly. So I made this. They leave donations, it helps. This is the rifle Seamus used during the Civil War. And these are the love letters that my great, great, great grandfather wrote to my great, great, great grandmother when they were in college. And this is the Purple Heart that my grandfather got fighting on Okinawa during World War II. When I'm sad, I'll be sitting here and tell them about my day. I understand. They all had harder days than my lousy days fighting off lousy drunks at a lousy bar. And when I'm gone, Sunshine will hang my picture on the wall and she'll sit in here what she said and I'll make her feel better. All this family, all this history, I've never felt connected to any place like this. You know what, I'll be remembered. It's comforting. You're so amazing. Thomas? What just happened? Don't be angry, I can explain. You just went all Linda Blair on me when we were making love. Sometimes when I feel great joy, like just now, God talks through me. God talks to you while you're having sex. He talks through me. So what does he say? People at my church say it sounds like an ancient language, but no one understands it. Wait, this happens at church too? It's what happens the most when I feel a connection to God. You're talking about speaking in tongues. We call it conversing with the Lord. My mother, my grandmother, my great-grandmother, they all had the gift. This isn't a gift. This is a neurological condition called glossolalia. I know what it's called. OK, so this conversing happens in church, but like I said, when I make love, it happens sometimes. It didn't happen the first time. I didn't orgasm the first time. Right. Thomas, say something. Like what? I don't know. Are you going to leave? Do you want me to? No. But men usually do. Is that... your husband's? Is that why they left? Mostly, yeah. I'm not leaving. I'm a little freaked out. But I'm not leaving. It's okay. It's okay. Doctor, Thomas Moore. Thomas, it's been a long time. Yes. I was sorry to hear about Stephanie. Thank you, I know. But that's not why I called. Oh? What can you tell me about glossolalia? Glossolalia? Why? Well, I met a woman, and I wanted to know if it was a problem. A problem like Stephanie? Yes, something like that. I see. 
Well, the science on it is still inconclusive, but it's not considered a terminal disorder. Is she religious? You could say that. Well, some doctors think glossolalia is environmental, a learned behavior. And some religions have a long history of their members speaking in tongues, often through several generations. But it's nothing necessarily serious. There was one study that said when a person had a glossolalial event, the test subject claimed to feel a rapturous joy, almost approaching the level of an orgasm. Broached, reached, and beyond. What? Uh, nothing, nothing. Um, thank you so much for your help, Doctor. I really appreciate it. Goodbye. Hello. Morning. Do you need something, Professor? Another lap bulb, perhaps. You're mad at me. Mad at you. You disappeared the other night. I didn't disappear. OK, I disappeared. I'm sorry. It won't happen again. Damn straight, it won't. Hey. You're gonna get me fired. I said I'm sorry. What more can I do? Say it again. I'm sorry. Why do I keep forgiving you? Because that's what Jesus would do? Not funny. What are you doing Saturday night? Working at the bar. Call in sick. I can't. I'll get fired. Get someone to cover for you. Why? Dr. Yoder is having a cocktail thing. The president of the university? Yes. No. What? What do you mean, what? He's the president. I suppose the college deans will be there, too. Probably. So? So, I'm a janitor. He's the president. The only time we socialize is when I'm cleaning out his private bathroom or emptying the trash. It's really no big deal. Yeah, it is. I just thought it would be nice. You know, the two of us going out. Like a couple. Couple? Yes. All right. On one condition. Name it. Later. Mysterious. I like it. Wear something sexy. I want every woman to be jealous of you and every man to want you. Even the president? Oh, especially the president. You're a bad man. Professor Moore? Miss Clark, I was just leaving. I'm having some trouble with my midterm paper. Okay, five minutes. The problem is on page two. Your premise is sound, but your use of Aquinas's double effect theory is the, uh, uh, the, uh, the double effect theory is misplaced in this section. Uh, and I think that, uh, you should go. I'm sorry, Professor. It's just that. Now. Dr. Moore, I'm so glad you could make it. Dr. Yoder, I'd like you to meet Abigail. I'm glad you could be here. Hello, Dr. Yoder. Darling, 
I'd like to introduce you to Dr. Moore, one of our newest faculty members, and Abigail Leeks. What's your area of study, Doctor? Forensic Biblical Studies, with an emphasis on post-apostolic textual analysis. It's like the CSI for Bible study. I understand your class is creating quite a stir with our students. Really? I'm surprised you've heard about it. He likes to stay close with the students. He has a blog and he chats with them online about various campus issues. What are they saying? They're mostly positive things. They've never seen the side of the Bible before, although some are disturbed. Shop talk. Come with me, dear. Let me introduce you around. Oh, Mrs. Yoda, everyone here seen me a hundred times. Yes, but not in that dress. I've never seen Abigail smile before. You said some of the students were disturbed. They believe you're attacking their faith. Their words, not mine. What do you think? I was a teacher long before I got this job. I believe in academic freedom as long as it's within the ethical guidelines of the university. Nothing I teach is unethical, quite the opposite. I show my students how to live a moral and ethical life. Without God? Yes. Goodness without God. That bothers you. Let's be honest, atheism is a new idea. Which is spreading. If that's God's plan. Sense of humor about religion. There's hope for you yet. Soon I'll have you reading Richard Dawkins. I wouldn't go that far. This isn't Los Angeles, Professor. The heart of a small town often beats to the rhythm of its churches. And some of its members will go to great lengths to ensure that that rhythm never changes. That feels good. Thomas? Yes. Did you ever sleep with Dr. Griffith? Yes. <laughs> no. Why not? We're friends. And besides, she would always want to be on top. <laughs> Thomas? Yes? What was your wife's name? Stephanie. Stephanie. What was she like? Well, let's see, um, she was a good cook, um, played poker like a pro, skill she got from a gunnery sergeant. No, Dad. no, what was she like? One night, some college buddies and I were going to a homecoming game. Oh, God, it was rain. <laughs> it's just pouring. <laughs> One of those storms that comes off the Pacific and dumps buckets. We were being slaughtered by Notre Dame. And all the cheerleaders who were on the sidelines huddled under umbrellas. Except one. She was soaked. Ah, hair plastered to her face, water running down her arms and legs. But she kept on cheering, as if she could stop the rain and win the game just through the sheer force of her body. You fell in love with her then? No. No, even then I was a realist. Stephanie was way out of my league. So? So, I crashed a party she was at. She was dating one of the football players, but he was drunk and hitting on some punk rock girl. We started talking. Our parents were getting a divorce, and uh, she just broke down and started crying. I hardly said a word. Well known secret about women. A man who listens is ten times more attractive than one with a tap butt. Oh, well, I have to remember that, considering the ever-expanding state of my ass. 
After a while, she put her head on my shoulder and she just fell asleep. I still remember the warmth of her body, the smell of her hair, the sound of her breathing. That was the precise moment I fell in love with her. But with you, I feel young. I mean, not like some hormone-ravaged teenager, but... Thomas? Yes? Will you do something for me? Anything. Come to church with me. Anything but that. Did we learn nothing from my last encounter with the clergy? But I went to your party. Yes, but... Mm, you promised. Sometimes it sucks being so ethical. Look around you here today. Every man, woman, and child in this room is on the verge of eternal damnation. Oh, I know you may say to me, Reverend, I'm good with the Lord, and you may well be. For now. But we are all sinners. We have to be ever vigilant. We have to keep our eyes ever open for the devil, for Satan, for his temptations. For the wages of sin is death. And the Lord said to those on the left hand, Depart from me, you cursed, into the everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his fallen angels. I can't do this. What? This. Why? Does it have to be a why? For me, yes. It doesn't matter. It matters to me. I love you. I know it in my heart. I need some tiny ray of hope that someday you'll feel how I feel. You'll open your heart to God. You know why I can't believe in God or Jesus or any of this? Tell me. Because Stephanie was a suicide. Thomas, I'm sorry. Day after day, things got so bad at the end. Took her to the hospice, but after a while, the drug stopped working. And she said she wanted to go home, so we did. And then one day, she asked me to put an end to it. I couldn't, I. She's in a place now where there's no pain. You don't get it, do you? There's no place for suicides in heaven. God only has one place for them. He doesn't punish like that. How do you know? How can you be sure? If you believe in God, if you believe in the Bible, then you have to believe all of it. You can't just cherry pick those parts that make you feel good. The Bible is very clear. On the greatest top 10 list of all time, thou shalt not commit murder. Ask any priest, any preacher, and he'll tell you. Suicide is self-murder. Jesus died for our sins. If Stephanie believed She her, did believe. That's the hilarious part. She was a believer. And she's in heaven. She committed a mortal sin. She's not allowed in heaven. If she confessed her sins before... Before she pulled the trigger? Is that even possible, considering she hadn't committed the sin yet? And she certainly couldn't have confessed afterwards. What about during? Did she ask God for forgiveness when the bullet ripped through her brain, destroying everything that she was? The, the cowardly, the unbelieving, the vile, the murderers, their place 
is in a fiery lake of burning sulfur. If you believe in Revelations, if you believe in the Bible, that's where Stephanie is right now, burning, screaming. She wants the pain to stop. What kind of a sick, twisted fuck of a God would do that to her? Thomas, my God loves us. He wouldn't do that to an innocent woman unless he had a reason. I have to believe that. I have to have that faith. I know. I know it would be so much easier just to hand it all over to some thing out there. You should go. What about us? What about what I said? No good for you, Abigail. We're just too far apart to ever be together. Ross has something rather upsetting to show you. Oh? Go ahead, Michelle. This showed up in my email this morning. crazy this far into the semester. No, I'm a 4.0 student. Are you pregnant, honey? No, I took an abstinence pledge. Good for you. I think I might have hurt someone. Who? I can't tell. She told me not to. Someone told you to hurt this person. My friend. She's an amazing Christian. She goes to church twice a week, knows the Bible backwards and forwards. She teaches Sunday school, and all the kids love her. She told me Jesus would want us to do it. Am I a bad person? No. How can you tell? Because you're here, and your friend isn't. Do you think I'm a bad person? Oh, no. Well, I am. I commit sins every day, take the Lord's name in vain all the time, and curse out those crazy old people driving too slow around here. Yeah, I do that too. And I sleep with way too many. The point is, none of us are saints. We all make mistakes, and Jesus is there to forgive us always and unconditionally. Even murderers and thieves can enter the kingdom of heaven. You didn't murder anyone, did you? No. Okay, then. I should get to class. Keep praying on this, honey. Sometimes God doesn't tell us what we want to hear, but he always tells us what we need to hear. God bless you. Lord, I don't know what that girl has done, but I know she wants to do right by you. Help her find the right path. Amen. And me too. Okay, people, okay. Today, we'll begin with Wettstein's investigation that refuted Jesus' divinity. Thanks. 
dismissed. Class dismissed! <laughs> Hey, Professor. I'm late for a committee meeting. Jess. Jess, wait! He seduced me. Seduced? You slept with him? Jess! Keep your voice down. It's not my fault. He kept calling and coming to my house, telling me how much Shayla won't have sex with you. You're the professor. Night. You're the one who's supposed to put a stop to it. Don't play a holier than thou with me. I know about you and Hannah Clark. There is nothing. Wait. You knew and you didn't tell me? I couldn't. If the disciplinary committee found out. Disciplinary? How long have you known? A few days. A student brought the video to the president. Who? You know I can't tell you that. Who was it? Shayla Ross. Once again, God triumphs over the evil sinner. What are you going to say about Kenny? I don't know. They're both over 18. You have a moral and ethical... Don't spout morals at me. Atheists don't get to play that card. I don't have to believe in a God to know the difference between right and wrong. And I don't get a free pass just because I say sorry on Sundays. I have to take responsibility for my actions every day. Right or wrong. For better or for worse. What are you going to do, Thomas? Thomas! Shayla, let's go. The game starts in like 10 minutes. It'll wait. Why are we here anyway? Witnessing, so we can tell the others. Dr. Moore, thank you for understanding. I'm sorry you had to go through this. What's she doing here? No. Truth always trumps deceit, Miss Ross. You'll know the truth when you stand before God and he reveals your life to you. True revelation only comes when we examine ourselves. Someday I hope you'll understand that. So I guess I'll fail your class now? I don't punish my students for doing what they think is right. No matter how petty or stupid. You do the work, you'll get the grade. Shut up, Kenny. Try something like that again, and I will personally see to it that you never graduate, you crazy little bitch. Kenny, find another tutor. Tutor? What's she talking about? Miss Ross. May I speak to you for a moment in my office? Of course. Kenny, this doesn't concern you.
Were you all right? I gave her the gun. Oh. She was in pain, Thomas. It was a kindness. I, I couldn't pull the trigger. And now she's down forever. You don't believe that. I wasn't strong enough. If I had pulled the trigger, Stephanie would be all right. And I'd be going to hell. Stephanie was a good person. She believes so she will be safe. doesn't work like that. That's what I believe. And you're a hypocrite, just like all the rest. I base my whole life, my career, everything on reason. Develop a hypothesis. Experiment to prove the hypothesis. If the data contradicts the hypothesis, then Reevaluate, discard, try again. If God is the hypothesis, then I need data. But there is no data. There go, no God. And if there is no God, then Stephanie's okay. Thomas, if you kill God, then you destroy all the love in the world. exist without God. I found the data. Good Lord's coming and it won't be long. Go up on the mountain and wait. Oh, God's children singing the angel song. Go up on the stuff, right? Yeah, I guess you're right about that. Abigail! 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 What are you doing here? I was wrong. I'm sorry. I'm an idiot. 
Can we please just talk about this? I can't do this anymore. Stay away from me. Well, what are you waiting for? A sign from God? Go after her! Abigail, wait! This won't work, Thomas. You know it and I know it. No, I don't know it. That's the point. You said it yourself. You'll never believe what I believe. Probably not, but what you believe or what I believe or what anyone believes about what we believe isn't important. Oh, really? And what's so damned important? Well, I'm trying to tell you if you just stop. No! Then I'll say it here. I love you. Damn it, Abigail, I love you. How dare you say this to me right now? How is this supposed to work, huh? I believe in God, you don't. I believe that Jesus died for my sins. You think he's some mass hallucination created by ignorant people like me. Let me tell you something, Professor. There are things in this world we don't yet understand. Smarter men than you used to think that the earth was flat and blood-sucking leeches cured diseases and the sun revolved around the earth. Did you ever think that God does exist, but you're too stupid to see him? Maybe I'm not the ignorant one here. Oh my God, Thomas, are you all right? I'm fine, I'm fine. Help me out. You're right. What? I said you're right. Maybe I am too ignorant to see God. I've worn my textbooks like armor. I wielded my PhD like a sword against religion for so long, I forgot. Real wisdom is knowing that I don't know everything. But I know this absolutely and unequivocally. I love you, and you love me. And that's all we need to believe. And if that means you dragging me to church every Sunday. And Wednesday nights. And Wednesday nights. And the occasional Friday. And so be it. So be it. Well, kiss her already. If you wanted to baptize me, all you had to do was ask. Come here, Professor. One, two, three.